Welcome to Oral Communication in Context, Week 6, Types of Speech Context. I am Mr. Nelpon Pisambalo, and I am your subject teacher for this course. What students need to know. This module was designed and written with you in mind. It is here to help you master the types of speech context. The scope of this module permits it to be used in many different learning situations. The language used recognizes the diverse vocabulary level of students. The lessons are arranged to follow the standard sequence of the course, but the order in which you read them can be changed to correspond with your needs. The module consists of one lesson, namely, types of speech context. After going through this module, you are expected to define speech context, identify the various types of speech context in different situations, and employ appropriate verbal and nonverbal behavior in different speech contexts. Lesson 1. Types of speech context. There is never a day that you do not communicate. It could be a group discussion, Facebook status update, dinner conversation with someone you are interested in, or a small talk with a family member. In this case, it is necessary for you to understand the concept of speaking in a variety of communication situations and the number of people you are communicating with. Since you have already learned the various components of communication in the earlier part of the previous modules, this time, you are going to look at the context and find out how to act appropriately in different situations in communication. What's in? In the previous lesson, you were able to determine the verbal and nonverbal cues that the speaker uses in order to achieve his or her purpose. You were given different activities that help you to fully understand the functions of communication. Example, control, social interaction, motivation, emotional expression, and information dissemination. You have now realized that your ability to communicate affects your relationship with the people around you. To further strengthen this insight, the task in this module will let you discover the meaning and types of speech context and apply appropriate verbal and nonverbal behavior in different speech contexts. What's new? Speech context. Context when referring to speech communication is the surroundings, circumstances, environment, background, or setting that determine, specify, or clarify the meaning of an event. According to the veto 2005, context refers to the setting in which the communication takes place. Context helps to establish a meaning and can influence what is said and how it is said. Read and, and carefully evaluate the statements written inside a circle, then select from the given communication context what you think matches the phrase. Choose the letter of the best answer. Let us have this activity so that you will have the idea on what is this so-called speech context. Let us begin. Number one, consoling a friend who is feeling down. Two, cheering yourself up before an important event. Three, delivering your graduation speech to your fellow graduates. Four, discussing with your group mates your assigned report. And lastly, articulating your stand on a pressing issue in the editorial page of your school paper. Let us match the following uh, situations to letters A, B, C, D, and E. Letter A, communication in public. B, communication with self. C, communication between two persons. D, mass communication. E, communication in a small group. So what do you think about number one? Consoling a friend who is spelling down? That is what? Communication between two persons. Letter C. How about number two? Cheering yourself up before an important event. That is what? Communication with self. That's letter B. Number three, delivering your graduation speech to your fellow graduates. That is? That is what? Communication in a small group. Is it? Is it communication in a small group? Or what? Communication in public. That is communication in public. Then number four, discussing with your group mates your assigned report. That is communication in a small group. That's letter E. And number five, articulating your stand on a pressing issue in the editorial page of your school paper. That is mass communication. So the following situations that we match to those uh, to those category are examples of speech context. So let's proceed for you to better understand our lesson for this week. What is it? Speech context is important because it helps you communicate appropriately, understand the meaning of any message conveyed, and respond accordingly. In order for you to have a clear grasp of what speech context is, its types are discussed below. Types of speech context or speech situation. 
intrapersonal, this refers to a type of communication that is focused on one person, where the speaker acts both as the sender and the receiver of the message. The message is made up of thoughts and feelings while the medium is the brain that processes what you think and feel. Examples. There is a voice within you that tells you, it's okay, you can still do it, you can make it, when you are losing your drive to finish the task that you are doing. Another example, when you told yourself not to talk to your friends when you have read in a Facebook post that they were in a party and you were not invited. So the intrapersonal speech context is all about the thoughts that you have your that you have in yourself and you are alone processing the thoughts and you are just dealing with your very own self. And as you experience it, you are experiencing this so-called intrapersonal context or speech context. After talking about intrapersonal speech context, now let's have the interpersonal speech context. This refers to the type of communication that takes place between and among people and creates a personal relationship between and among them. Normally, it includes two individuals and it can vary from casual and very personal to formal and impersonal. So this type of speech context is more complex than intrapersonal because this one involves people this one involves a person or people as you go communicating with them in a conversation and also the the topics the topics may keep on varying and the manner of exchanging ideas may also vary that's why this is more complex than the intrapersonal speech context wherein you are just dealing with yourself and you're the one who's just processing the thoughts that you have in your mind. This one, you have to process the ideas that you will be sharing with your friends or with the people whom you're talking to. And at the same time, you have to process the ideas being, being said to you by these people. And of course, you deal with many factors or things you consider a lot of things as you deal with the conversation just like the barriers and other factors that affect communication and of course your main goal here is to what to understand the conversation that is going on between you and and that person or among those people or involving those people okay so the interpersonal uh, speech context and in the next slide, we will be discussing about the types of interpersonal speech context. As I promised, let's discuss what are the types of interpersonal communication. The first is the dyad communication. Whenever we say dyad communication, it's a communication that happens between two people. That's why the term is dyad. Examples of a conversation that is under dyad communication the first is when you console your brother who's not feeling well or you consoled your brother who was not feeling well or who was feeling down. The next, a conversation between your father and mother about the latest announcement of your barangay chairman or it can be, it can be what? A conversation between you and your friend who's, who, who's sharing a secret with you. So that's dyad, okay? Because whenever it's a secret, typically it's being said to a person alone or sometimes to one or two pers uh, one or two people. But of course, since we're talking about dyad communication, let us assume that you are the closest of friends. That's why it's that that's why the secret is just being shared to you and not to anybody else or not to anyone else. So dyad communication, okay? Let's have the second type of interpersonal communication we have the small group. Small group applies to interactions involving at least three, but not more than 12 people engaged in face-to-face -face interactions to achieve the desired goal. In this type of conversation, all participants can freely express their ideas throughout the discussion. Examples of small group uh, communication, we have you are having a discussion with your two brothers about the surprise party you are planning for your mom's birthday. Another example would be Kathleen who came back from the United States called her three brothers and four sisters and announced that she is getting married. So again, you need to be particular with the number of people that are involved in the in the conversation and also again, this type of communication, the people whom you are talking to 
are familiar on you wherein you are aware of their of their of their names or you are kind of uh, attached to them unlike in public communication and like in mass media communication okay so that's why again if this is an interaction involving at least three but not more than 12 people so a small group communication okay let's continue the next type of interpersonal speech context communication is the public. Whenever we say public communication, this type refers to a communication that enables you to send or deliver a message before a crowd. The message can be transmitted for informative or persuasive purposes. In public communication, unlike interpersonal and small groups, the channels are more exaggerated. The voice is louder and the gestures are more expensive because the audience is larger. Examples, delivering a graduation speech to your fellow graduates and another example you were elected as the new ssg president of your school and were given a chance to deliver a message of gratitude to your fellow students so public speech context what makes it different from from small group small group uh, communication is that you are addressing it you are addressing it to people to people whom you do not know but still you have to speak or voice out your mind your ideas in mind because you are you are the very important person to deliver that speech or to give uh, ideas about something or about a topic okay so that's why it's public so unlike in small group communication we're in you know these people whom you're talking to okay this one a good example of this is a speech that is being delivered by someone in front of people or in front of an audience. Okay, so again, we have the public interpersonal type of speech context. The third type of interpersonal communication is the mass communication. What is mass communication? This refers to communication through television, radio, newspapers, magazines, books, billboards, the internet, and other types of media. Examples, you are watching a televised briefing on COVID-19. Another one is you have recorded a commentary for your school's online discussion of the pandemic and uploaded it in your social media account. So those two examples are under mass communication because you have the involvement of the mass media or of the media wherein the number of people that can listen or can can watch or can be affected by the message that you would like to deliver is really that wide or that big that's why it's mass communication okay so it's of course it's very different from from small group and public communication so again this is the third type the mass communication now that you are aware with the different types of speech context pertaining to intrapersonal and interpersonal wherein under interpersonal you have there the diet small group public and mass communication it's high time for us to study verbal and nonverbal behavior in a speech context so remember this different speech context whether it is intrapersonal interpersonal public or mass communication requires different approaches though there might be some occasional similarities you should at least know how to behave and respond to various speech contexts appropriately so so this is the thing that I am mentioning earlier to you wherein there are factors to be considered when it comes to communicating with people and it's not just enough that you are aware with the speech context or the situation that you are in in a conversation or the environment or whom the people you are talking to but there are still other factors that you have to consider as you go communicating or conversing with the people that you are in in that certain conversation okay so put again in mind that there are things that you must consider and one of those is the so-called verbal and nonverbal behavior in a speech context be reminded that when talking to yourself you might be familiar with the feeling of quietly talking to yourself in your mind and it's normal and good for you by performing this, it makes you think and reflect on the things you have done or are planning to do. But here are some important reminders that you need to keep in mind as you do talking to yourself. Okay?
okay? So, usually you do this whenever you are meditating on something or you are trying to reflect on what you experience uh, during the day. You are thinking about if you have done good things or if you have done something bad and you are trying to collect yourself on deciding uh, on deciding whether your actions are good or not or maybe whenever you are uh, about to make an important decision in life you do this talking to yourself and there's nothing wrong about this it's natural do not have in mind that you're kind of crazy already because you're talking to yourself no this is normal uh, normal to us or it's it's just normal that we do talk to ourselves okay so let's have uh, talk let's have the things that we need to have in mind as we talk to ourselves okay so what are the things that we need to remember whenever we do the self talk the first is use self talk to your advantage cheering yourself up before an important event or talking to yourself while completing a task are two perfect opportunities for self talk according to gold 2018 talking to yourself is normal so we do this whenever we would like to convince ourselves that we are doing the right thing that we would like to to boost our confidence before doing something okay so it's a good habit that we talk to ourselves because it's our way of boosting our confidence before doing anything else or at least it gives us hope that we can accomplish something so again you do the you self talk to your advantage the second reminder is don't overdo it don't overdo it while it is normal to talk to yourself constantly it is better not to overuse yourself of doing so the most common reason why people end up talking to themselves is because they feel like they do not have someone else to talk to to address this you need to be more sociable it would give you more people to talk to other than yourself okay so as you keep on doing this one you overdo the talking to yourself this is the time that people think that you are crazy that people think that the reason why you keep on doing that because you're not sociable you're anti-social that you do that you're not a gregarious person that you have less number of friends so again the the remedy for this is for you to be sociable enough for you to gain enough friends so that whenever you are confused of something then you have someone to talk to and enlighten you about that thing that you are confused about okay so don't overdo the talking to yourself so please be reminded of these two uh, things uh, when it comes to talking to yourself looking at the image we can tell that we have their two girls who are seriously talking with each other under the so-called dyad communication because we only have two persons involved so it's dyad if it's three then it's small group okay so what could be the situation so consoling your friend who is feeling down or simply talking with your classmates about your plans for a group activity is an example of a dyad in a small group communication this kind of communication implies that the conversation is being shared and there is exchange of ideas a small group involves different skills because unlike dyad it consists of more than two people in both cases you can be as natural as yourself however unlike a running conversation in your head you have to consider that there are others who are equally important Important in the conversation thus to achieve successful communication in a diet or a small group you have to consider the following so let's find out what are the things that you need to consider whenever you are in a small group or in a diet communication okay so this is the best time for you to realize that talking with your friend talking with your friends is not a matter of being the star of the conversation okay so let's find out the things to be considered when you are in a diet or a small group conversation listen carefully that's the first rule when it comes to diet or small group conversation needless to say this is the very basic foundation of effective communication you have to listen carefully and understand what the other person is saying asking clarifying questions lets the other person know that you are indeed listening attentively more so take active part you also need to be heard and understood when it is your time to speak 
So as you listen carefully, then you can process. You can process the ideas that are being uh, being fed to you by the speaker. So by doing so, you can provide you can provide uh, feedbacks that are with depth and not just feedbacks just for the sake of speaking without anchoring it on a what on the topic of the conversation. That's why sometimes no, you can listen, you can hear people saying that uh, I don't like talking to that person because uh, that person doesn't listen well and doesn't give good feedback or comment because not attentive to whatever I'm saying. So we should not hear or let us practice ourselves not doing so so that we cannot hear that kind of comment. Okay, so the first thing whenever you are in a dyad or small group conversation is for you to listen carefully. The second reminder whenever you are in a dyad or small group speech context is for you to check your tone and body language. The vocabulary of the body is more revealing than the actual words you speak. So watch your tone and body language while you are talking. Is your tone tough? Do you smile and encourage the person you are talking to? Your body language tells more about your emotions and thoughts than your actual words. Bear this in mind. The next time you have a conversation with someone, check your body language to ensure that it is consistent with your words, according to Oaks 2017. So, it is really true that action speaks louder than words. So, for the people whom you are conversing or talking with, uh, become interested with you or do not lose the enthusiasm talking to you is for you to show that that you are really enjoying the conversation or you are not annoyed with what is being talked about and how can you do that by being particular with your tone and body language is it wherein as you speak you you must sound entertained you must sound not annoyed by the one you are talking about or you are having there the smiling face or you know how to, you know what kind of emotion you will be showing depending on the topic that you're talking about. For example, you're talking about the loss of that person, then it's not good that you're smiling. That person will get, will get annoyed by you, is it? So, if you are talking about happy things, then have, have happy expressions. If you're talking about sad things, then sad expressions also. Also, do not keep on... Do not keep on uh, scratching your back, keep on moving or having their the mannerisms of yours because they are what? They are they are nuisance in converse, conversation. They 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 what? They really make the people whom you're talking to bothered or distracted. So they cannot go on with what they are about to say because they are disrupted by your actions or by your mannerism. So that's why it's very good for us to check our tone and body language. Okay, so the tone, uh, really, you, you must know, you must know what tone you will be using. We're in, oh, really? We're in, it should be sound, it should be sounding like that. We're in, is that so? We're in, you are not, you are not what? Questioning the person whom you're talking to. Really? Really? Is it really? As if, you know, uh, I should listen to a person who's saying, really, 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 oh, you see, if you can really determine uh, what is the, what is the attitude of that person based on how, uh, how the person uh, utters the word, is it? So, check your tone, okay? Okay. 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 You see? The last one sounded what? Sounded that you're not interested. Is it? And like the, okay. Very what? Very uh, accommodating. Okay? So again, check your tone and body language. Let us figure out what are the things that we need to consider when talking to the public. Speaking in front of the crowd requires many preparations, from analyzing your target audience, to planning and drafting your speech up to the rehearsing part. The key, therefore, is to come prepared. Be yourself while you are on stage and speak in the way that you will be easily understood by your audience. You will know more about this in the succeeding modules about the principles of speech delivery. So, of course, public speaking is a, is the, is a bigger world is a bigger world than, than diet, uh, speech context, and small group 
uh, context wherein you really have to come prepared not just with your with the topic that you will be talking about or the speech that you will be sharing to your audience but there are many considerations like for example the dress yes how do you look like how are you going to pronounce the words how are you going to maintain the audience uh, audience attention and how will you deliver your speech itself so those are factors that you need to consider but of course whenever you come prepared on a speaking engagement or an, on a speech uh, delivery uh, event then there's nothing to worry about especially if you will be true to yourself wherein you will be yourself when you step on the stage and you will speak in the way that you can understand yourself if you can understand understand yourself as you speak then definitely people also will understand you okay so it's kind of the same with what i discussing uh, my lesson whenever i don't understand myself meaning to say there's something wrong with what i am sharing to my students so i have to understand myself also uh, i have to understand myself first okay so i should deliver a speech uh, you check on it if your audience can understand what you are saying but of course as you come prepared as you come prepared to the event you prepared your speech then have there the confidence that you can deliver it perfectly so again confidence is badly needed whenever you are about to speak in public because if you will not bring it with you then you will not be a good speaker or a public speaker because definitely you do you cannot lure the audience to listen on whatever you are about to deliver to them okay so kind kind uh, remember those and bring them with you as you talk in public so again uh, those are the things that you need to remember when talking to the public what's more let's have this crossword puzzle Complete the puzzle below by identifying the four types of speech context and the two types of interpersonal communication evident in the presented situations. So across, let's have number one, four students are discussing their, their thesis proposal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, S-M-A-L-L-G-R-O-U-P, small group, is it? Number three, Migi requested his brother Miko to help him on his task. So number three, that is what? diet communication so d1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 d y a d c o m m a what d y a d c o m a u n i t i o n communication spell communication c o m m u n i c a t i o n so diet communication is it <laughs> the number six the city mayor delivered a speech for his towns uh, towns folk so number six, is it across? That is public. That is what? Down. Okay. So down. Public. P-U-B-L-I-C. P-U-B-L-I-C. Then down. Webinars for teachers are conducted by a Facebook Live. That's number two. We have what? That is mass communication. One. M-A-S-S-C-O-M-M-U-N-I. C-A-T-I-O-N, mass communication. The number five, Eman talks to himself in front of the mirror. That is, that is what? Number five, that is inter, intrapersonal. E-I-N-T-R-A, then personal. Okay. Then number four, the principal interview a teacher applicant. That is, dyad. Okay? So, dyad. So, how about number three? Migi requested his brother Miko to help him on his task. Ah, that is uh, interpersonal. I N T E R P E R S O N A L. Ah, okay, interpersonal number three. So let's continue. What I have learned, so you will be answering these questions in the Google Classroom. Look for the Google Form link and deal with this, okay? So the first question, I'll read it. Based on what you have learned from the previous activities, how would you define speech context in your own words? So it's up to you to define it based from your understanding of our lesson for this week. So continue answering it down to number five or last question. Again, look for the Google Form link. 
what I can do using the graphic organizer below. Describe each type of speech context and give three examples for each. One point for each correct example for the description. Refer to the following rubric for evaluating the answer in description. So the rubric is attached in the Google form link. So you deal with this activity. So public communication, you describe it and then give three examples of public communication. Okay, so it's kind of easy. Under additional activities, try to recall what you did and how you felt when you experienced any of the situations. Your best friend confided a secret to you. You delivered a speech in front of your classmates as a subject requirement. You talked to yourself about the things you did and what you were supposed to do instead. What can you say about your experience? What did you learn from it? If you have a second chance, how will you deal with the situations? What examples of verbal and nonverbal re responses will you use? Write your answer in a separate sheet of paper. Then rubric in evaluating the essay is provided in the Google Form link. So direction, your essay will be graded based on this rubric. Consequently, use this rubric as guide in writing your essay and check it again before submitting your final output. So again, you check your Google classroom look for the google form link and in the google form link you have there the rubric for this activity thank you hopefully you have learned a lot from our week's lesson good day and god bless us all